Hey everybody, Fatty here. I'm not an electrician, but I ain't afraid to fool with it. In fact, when I built this house four years ago, I, I wired it by myself. Doing your own electrical is something that you can do. You just gotta be careful. I mean, you can get yourself hurt or burn your house down, but I'm not telling you anything you don't already know. But you can do it if you do your own studying and your research and just careful with it, it's something you can do. But with that said, just remember, I'm not an electrician, so anything that I tell you or show you in this video, keep that in mind and do your own research and answer your own questions because if you turn yourself into a crispy critter or if you burn your house down, I don't want that up on me. Now when I wired this house, particularly down here in this shop, I didn't anticipate all the cool little gadgets and toys that I'd start to accumulate, so I really didn't wire it adequate for what I have now, and I need more circuits. Now, I could go back into my main panel and run some more circuits, but kind of the problem that I have is my panel's not plumb full, but it's getting full, and I don't want to take all my remaining slots to run more circuits down here. What I want to do is take two more of these slots and put a breaker in it and let that feed a sub-panel. That's what I have right here. And what that'll do is it'll give me six or seven more slots that I can run circuits off of. Now the other thing that this will do for me is I'll only have to get back into this main panel one more time. Now when I get in here, I'm going to turn the main off, but those two top lugs remain hot. And even though I'm comfortable doing this kind of stuff, something about getting in this main panel kind of gets up in my head. So by putting this sub panel in, I'm only going to have to get in here one more time and then if I ever need to run a circuit off a sub panel, why well, I can just kill the breaker here and my sub panel ain't gonna be hot. Now I've kind of evolved in my thinking on a lot of things and I went ahead and pulled a permit to put this sub panel in. Now I know us guys were kind of like, I'm gonna do this myself and you know, it's my house and I'll do what I want to with it and I get it, I'm that same way, but by getting this permit for 50 bucks, it's going to do a couple things for me. First thing is it just allows me to call up the electrical inspector and say, hey, how do you want this done? What kind of wire do you want me to use? What kind of conduit do you want me to run? You know, what do you, how do you want it to look when you come out to inspect it? And I've already done that, and he told me exactly how he wants it to be. So I, you know, I don't have any worries at all about that. The other thing is I've heard more and more, in fact, the electrical inspector told me more and more times when a house burns down, they have a sub panel that wasn't inspected and insurance companies are kind of giving them grief over that. So I'm gonna get this thing inspected and get a sticker put on it. And when the electrical inspector comes next week, he'll just walk in, it'll be done just exactly the way he wants it. So now it's time to go ahead and get started. And what I'm gonna do first is I'm gonna go ahead and just take the cover off this main panel and I'm gonna hang up my, my sub panel box. You can see here where I had it inspected before. Now I'm just gonna hang my sub panel box up. I had an old piece of scrap plywood and I screwed it into some studs. And I'm just gonna hang my sub panel on it. Okay, it's good and strong right there. Now I have to kind of figure out how I'm going to get my wire from here to here. And I don't want to tear out all the drywall and fool with that, so I'm just going to run on the outside. And the electrical inspector told me he wanted to see it in an inch and a half PVC conduit. So I've got to kind of figure out, I'm going to come in from the bottom with it, and I'm going to come up through the bottom of this panel. So I just kind of need to work all that out. So let me do that, and I'll come back and show you how I'm going to do this. Okay, so I gotta get this sub panel ready to accept this conduit there like that. So I'm gonna just bump out one of these knockouts so this thing will go right up through air. And there's other ways to do this and tools to do it with. But I don't have them, so I'm just gonna pop it out. That'll go right up through there. So now maybe you can see how all this is kind of coming together. My wire is going to come out of my sub panel, 
come down through here, turn into the wall, and come up the bottom of the main panel. Now, the problem that I have is I can't really turn this conduit real sharp into the wall and go into the drywall, and even if I could, it'd look kind of messy and hinky. So what I've done is I've got one of these little boxes here, and I'm gonna use this box to kind of hide the hole where it goes into the drywall. And to do that, I'm gonna to have to cut out virtually all the back of this box. And what I'm gonna do is take a hole saw and chuck it up in the drill press and then just cut out the back. Now, right here, where this conduit comes in, I'm gonna take a two inch hole saw and cut a hole for it. And that way, everything will go together real nice and snug. Now, I may end up moving this sub panel over a little bit so that I can get this thing drilled into a stud about right here, but I'll address that in a minute. So let me take this over to the drill press and drill this out, and I'll come back and show you what I got. So here's how it's turned out. Cut a really big hole in the back, and that'll give me a lot of room to maneuver that big heavy wire and get it turned and up through the wall through its main panel. And when I mount it to the wall here, well this box is gonna hide whatever hole that I have to cut in the drywall. Now on the side, this piece right here just fit right in, and all this will fit together real nice. So let me go ahead and work all this out, get this box mounted, get my hole cut in the drywall, and I'll come back and we're about ready to go ahead and pull this wire through. Okay, I hope you can see this okay, but I've gone ahead and punched out one of these big knockouts in the bottom of this panel. And I've gone ahead and cut the hole in the wall. Now, I don't want my wire just to run up through here and be laying and scraping on that hard, sharp edge right there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take one of these fittings right here. And I'm going to come up through this hole and send it up to the bottom of this panel. Now, in order to guide it a little bit better, I cut me a small little piece of conduit. I'll put it on there like that, and I'll just guide it on up through there that way. Now, once it's through the bottom of the panel, I'm gonna come in here with one of these little conduit lock nuts and cinch it down that way. And then I'll come on top with one of these bushings and then just kind of finish it off that way. So that way there's a relatively smooth edge right here and there'll be room for me to kind of maneuver that wire around to where I need it to go. So let me go ahead and do this and I'll come back and show you what I got. Okay, so that's what we end up with. I'm gonna go ahead and attach this box to the wall and start pulling the rest of this conduit around and get everything situated and we'll be ready to pull this wire. Now the wire that I'm using for this sub panel is a number two aluminum wire. And just hush, I don't wanna hear it. People use aluminum wire all the time to put in sub panels. Aluminum wire is what's running from the street to this service entrance, and I've talked to my electrical inspector about it, and uh, in fact, this is what he recommended. So you can use aluminum wire for this kind of application, but you do have to take some precautions, and I'll explain that in just a minute. Now this wire has two hots, you two blacks, a neutral, and a ground. And it comes kind of semi-twisted up, so that it don't flop around all over the place and you can kind of work with it. Now one of the benefits, I think, of working with this aluminum wire is you can kind of, you can kind of work with it a little easier, and especially if you've got a panel that's already been wired and it's full and you've got wires going every which way, it's a lot easier, I think, to work with in a big, heavy copper wire. Now when you strip this wire, it's got a real thick, heavy jacket on it. And what I do is I just take a utility knife and score it all the way around and then score it out the end. Then you can take your fingernail and just dig it and it'll just peel right off. So one of the problems with this aluminum wire is these bare exposed ends will have a tendency to want to oxidize. So as a precaution, all you do is take you an oxide inhibitor, which is really just kind of like a thick, heavy grease almost, and you gob it there on them exposed ends and wipe it on real good, and then you just hook it up like you would any other wire. So that's, that's uh, what I use for the wire. Let me show you how all this stuff hooks up. Okay, I've actually got everything put together and hooked up. I've got all my conduits run. I actually pulled my wire. I've got everything hooked up, and I'm fixing to show you what I did. But before I show you that, I want to point out a couple of things here in my main panel. 
Now when I wired this house, I was real neat and meticulous, and you can see how all my neutral wires are going to my neutral bars, and behind that my ground wires are going to my ground bars. Now those neutral bars and those ground bars are essentially connected by virtue of that green screw right there. That green screw is run plumb in, and it's essentially bonding all this together. Now let's contrast that with the sub-panel. Now for my application on this sub-panel, you can see that my neutrals and my grounds are isolated from one another. Now usually when you buy a sub-panel, it doesn't come with that little grounding bar. You just buy it separate. You pick up something like this, and you just screw it in place. There's several different places where you can mount it. There's holes that are already you know, pre-threaded. You just take this thing, it comes with the screws. You find a place, for me it made sense to do it right here, and you just screw it into place. Now these number two wires are really big and they're really thick, and the problem that creates is right here on your neutral bar, that wire is too big around to slip in the hole on your neutral bar. So what you have to do is get one of these lugs. And what that is, you can see this thing's got little tabs on the bottom of it, and those tabs actually slip into your neutral bar and they tighten down, and then that lug is big enough for that number two wire to go in. So let me show you what that looks like. So there you can see that lug and you can see my neutral wire going into it. And you can see how those tabs on that lug just slip into this neutral bar right here and tighten down. Now right there you can see my 100 amp breaker and it's turned off. Now this panel that I have is a QO series by Square D and the way that breakers go into this panel, I don't know if you can see right here, this little bar running up. It's kind of a plastic with a little round over on it. Well on their breakers, there's a little, I don't know what you call that, a little clasp or something like that. And on the front, that snaps in to that little round bar. Now on the back, that shiny, scary part that'll make you feel alive and dead all at the same time, well on the back of their breakers, there's another one oriented in a different direction, and that mashes over top of that. So you just mash them things in there and get them in real good, and that's all there is to it. Now you can see my hot wires coming up, and they're just going into the breaker, and I put some of that anti-oxidizer on it and tighten them down, that's all there is to that. Now right here you can see my neutral and my ground, how it's coming up, and I ran it behind the other wiring, and let me show you how that hooks in. Now my neutral wire is coming up, and it's connecting into that lug I was telling you about, and it's hard to see, but behind it you can see my ground wire, that green wire right there, and it just comes up and turns in and it's connected into that ground bar. Now over here on my sub panel, it's pretty straightforward. You see my two hots coming in. I'm going right there to one side, the other hot's going to the other side. My neutral's coming up, it's going around and it's connecting into that neutral bus. And then my ground is running behind it and it's connecting into that ground bar. One thing that I wanted to point out that I failed to mention earlier is when I got in here and actually started hooking everything up, I turned off my main breaker. So I wasn't in that panel working with it hot. Some people do that, and I've probably done it before too, but today I just killed all the power so that there wasn't no juice on that main panel. So for now I'm going to go ahead and get all this semi button back up and I'm going to call the electrical inspector and have him come out here and inspect all this and put me a sticker in here showing that I've passed. At the very end of this video, I'm going to show you where he's passed me on this sub-panel. Hey, I hope you enjoyed this video and maybe learned something, but like I said in the very beginning, I'm not an electrician, so if you do take a notion to do a job like this yourself, please do your own research and get your own advice. I just wanted to show you how I did mine and that it passed inspection and I'm good to go. As always, if you like my videos, remember give me a thumbs up, leave me some comments, and subscribe to my channel. Thanks for watching. What can go wrong? And the other thing is, and another thing, boys that I'd start accumulating. Daggone it. Now when I wired this house, particularly down here, everybody's texting me and calling me and everything else. It'll allow me to only have to get it back into the... 
and as I'm gonna, I just called up the plenty of room to get that. That'll cover up whatever will hold. I'll come back and we'll be up. <laughs> Good. And all this together, it'll tag you on it. To go in to uh, into that. You can kind of work with it. And I forgot what I was going to say next. Just kind of work it in and just 